All right, hey everyone. All right, today I want to talk to you guys about um, you know where the boat's at. I'll show you what I've done to it recently. But basically, this episode is going to be about budget. So I've done a bunch of things to it. It's not quite ready yet, but it's almost at, I guess, a minimum viable product level. So it's at a level where I can use it um, and it will, will be okay. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because and, and I'm going to track the budget all the way through, by the way, and tell you guys, as I hit certain stages, you know, exactly how much it's cost me, etc. Um, it's because I see a lot of people buying these old Bertrams and Caravans and totally um, miss, like, planning poorly, basically. And uh, these boats can and do easily turn into absolutely, um, you know, money pits. And um, if you think you can buy one of these very cheaply and end up with an amazing boat with all modern running gear, engines, electronics and that cheaply, you're wrong. I can tell you now, whether you buy one of these as a beaten up, rotten out hull for two grand or you buy a reasonably good one for whatever you pay, they still will end up costing you a little bit of money. Like, well, I mean, a decent amount of money because, I mean, look, even this... If you want good gear, this Bravo 3 here alone, you know, we're talking 15 grand. Um, trim tabs, uh, expensive new engine, you know, if you want good stuff, it costs money. Even if your bones of, of the hull uh, cost you stuff all. But um, anyway, so quick reminder, what have I done to it so far? Um, just, and then I'll cover the actual costs. Obviously, um, starting to restore some woodwork. Got this nice custom cover uh, made up, as you can see there. New trailer lights, new wheel bearings on the trailer. Pretty cool how the cover goes around here. Uh, new spare wheel, new jockey wheel, new plug and wiring. This brake controller was put on not long before I bought it. So was the boat catch, so was the uh, electric anchor winch again like we're talking big money here these things you know add up um, good quality lights on this thing Nava lights and stuff so that was all spent um, before I bought the boat um, nice Viper outriggers again sort of expensive you know these things are adding up into many many thousands so they were on there um, I put the new rod holders in so look, I'll, I'll jump inside the boat now, show you inside, and we'll talk through the costs. Okay, so inside the boat, um, apart from like things like, you know, filling a million holes and things, which is still continuing. Um, new battery in there. Um, engine, obviously serviced. Another thing that I had uh, done recently, is I had a bunch of wiring tidied up uh, under here. Batteries put in battery boxes. Um, so let's have a look at this side. This side's a lot tidier as well. I mean, obviously you still need a lot of wiring in there, but uh, it's all up off the floor now. Um, isolator switch was moved so it doesn't get wet. Basically, wires were literally just running on the on the floor. Um, inside the cabin, I finally reinstalled that headboard. You know, something that would seem so simple um, ended up taking me ages because, of course, they had just all the old wiring just drilled straight through the headboard, going straight through up in the top here, and. Um, I had genuine design challenges to relocate a bunch of really poor wiring before I could actually make some new headboards and cover them in vinyl and reinstall them. It's a bit dark at the moment, but this vinyl here, it's marine vinyl, and the color is actually called sand. And look, it's gonna go really nicely. I know a lot of people will stick with the blue or they go to gray to try and modernize the look. As I've discussed, I, I want to modernize it a little bit, but I still want that classic look. So 
all the blue um, will eventually become that sand color. So as you will notice as well, I've removed all the carpet because, you know, carpet's an absolute nightmare in a fishing boat. And this, this boat's going to see a lot of action, don't worry, and you guys will see it. I want to be able to hose the boat out at the end of the day, so I don't want any carpet. As part of doing that, I found a 50 mil circle hole in the floor here draining into this area here which would drain down to the build so they must have had some sort of live bait tank or draining esky or something here so i've filled that hole um, and to do it properly i had to actually cut it out a bit bigger and did a really good job at it um good news is all the floor and everything looks really really solid solid under there no signs of rust sorry rust um rot or anything like that whatsoever so look, um, another thing I had done, sorry, recently, um, I installed a um, Mercury Bluetooth Vessel View mobile module, so you can get sort of real-time diagnostic information, fuel usage, all sorts of stuff basically on an app or on your phone. So look. Even what I've told you there, um, you might be looking at what I've done and you just think, well, I haven't done much or it doesn't look like I've done much or surely that wouldn't have cost much money, but I'm doing all the things first, which um, they don't look like much, right? So it doesn't, apart from the hood lining in there, like I haven't even polished this boat yet, to be perfectly honest. I haven't sanded or restored any of the woodwork or anything yet so it still looks like kind of a you know an old boat but um i'm doing it to get all the mechanical stuff right first you know so i can maintain it wash it clean it no more water leaks inside all that sort of stuff um the pretty up phase will come don't worry all right now i'm just gonna have a look through some of the actual costs to get me to where i am And of course, every now and then you make mistakes as well. Um, <coughs> accidentally cut my transducer wire. So now I'm gonna have to try and join that. Um, pain in the ass, probably gonna replace the transducer anyway with a better unit, but I didn't need it, need that problem right now. It's just an unwanted uh, expense. So having seen all that, it doesn't look like I've done that much to the boat. Although I have, and it's cost me a fair bit of money. So let's talk through that. All right, this is in no particular order. <clears throat> okay, so far, random bits, $1,750, believe it or not. And what do I mean by that is uh, stainless steel bolts and screws, some glue, some, some rust paint for the trailer, just, just, some rollers for the trailer, um, new lights for the trailer, new plug, just random bits and pieces that you can't really notice. And, um, you know, you sort of look around and go, oh, I don't see 1750 bucks worth of random bits and pieces, but that's genuinely uh, what that has come out to. So I didn't, I didn't detail that, but that's just random junk that has gone nowhere, it would seem. But, yep, yeah, 1750 let's keep going. <coughs> Cover, 950. Service the engine, full service of the engine, recondition the seawater pickup pump like new impeller uh, recondition it. Um, there was nothing nothing overly wrong with it. the impeller was a bit dodgy. Plus replace all the wheel bearings, 1650. Um, replacing a damaged engine sensor on the trim unit, that's what was causing me the beeping plus uh, supply of the Mercury Vessel View mobile module, $11.55. Tidy up of all my boat wiring at the back there and installation of those um, battery boxes, $1,000. New battery, $250. Spare wheel, $150. I'm going to total it at the end, um, don't worry. Rod holders, 120. New wiper blades, 50. 
inshore flares that I had to rebuy, 100 bucks. I'm just saying everything. Jockey wheel, um, 350. Sorry, and that was also with a cheap polisher to polish the boat. Battery charger, new battery charger I needed, 90 bucks. Some rust paint for a couple of rusted, like rust converter paint and oh, some, yeah, rust converter type paint, 40. New floor paint, which hasn't gone down yet, 140. Plywood for inside that headboard there, because it's marine ply and other marine ply I've used around the place, cutting board, uh, 100. Vinyl to, for that headboard, 70. And a small fiberglassing kit um, was 50. Now, so that's basically what I've spent so far, okay? And let me just do a quick tally up here and I'll get back to you. All right, so I did a very, very rough count up there, like a 20 second job. It's, it's roughly $8,000, just on what I've told you so far. And like I said, this boat already had $44,000 worth of engine, brand new trim tabs, anchor, expensive anchor winch, um, expensive outriggers. So it already had a, a bunch of money spent on it. Floor and transom rock solid. Now, to get this boat sort of fully over the line, um, I'll be re-trimming all the vinyl to the sand colour, re-trimming all the seats, or probably getting the seats done professionally. Um, I'm gonna do a single 16 inch HDS live unit here. Haven't chosen the transducer yet, but it might be a TM275 um, LHW. So then I'm going to also, I'm gonna, the whole, um, should polish up very nicely up until the gunnel rubbers, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna then paint all the inside and the outside up until the gunnel rubbers because there's just a lot of imperfections, a lot of holes I've filled and stuff like that. Um, and then I'm sort of in two minds about whether I am gonna actually put a rocket launcher back on the roof or not. That's why I haven't pulled the trigger on that um, because I, I really do, I'm starting to love the look of not having the rocket launcher. Um, and then, yeah, and that's all like, uh, that's not including future upgrades like, you know, extra fuel tanks, all that sort of stuff. So that's even more money for that sort of fabrication. So look, let me do a quick calculation uh, in my mind. So, six, eight, ten. I mean, look, this, just what I've said will be another fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars to be honest, because you're looking six thousand dollars for a sounder unit alone without a decent transducer, which is another couple of grand. A um, couple of thousand for trimming puts us at ten. Paint, so it'll end up being somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars for the remainder of that. Now, um, look, that's just how it is. I'm just gonna say, like straight up, don't buy one of these. 23s or 25s and thinking you can build a genuine great boat on an absolute budget because you may be able to to do it on a budget but you won't have one of those in it i can guarantee you that because that alone is such an expensive unit so um but you know this is a genuine seven meter boat it's it's a big boat it's a solid sweet riding boat it may be old as a bloody dog but um this puts a lot of modern boats to shame out there on the water, okay? Like, no no tinny or plate alloy boat comes utterly close to this thing in this size range, and many new fiberglass boats don't. So, the ocean doesn't care how old your boat is, right? It doesn't care. Uh, the ocean, you know, the ocean's happy either way. So, like, this will turn out to be a, a very, very uh, nice boat when it all is said and done. But, look, it is really important to understand that these old boats, the Birchins and Caribbeans, like many things do, they have a ceiling, okay, on what they're gonna be worth, like the absolute maximum value. And you need to be careful not to go over that value because when it comes time to sell, you're just gonna be getting shafted, to be perfectly honest. And a lot of people way overspend on these 23s, and the, especially the 25s. Um, in Australia, the 23s are much more sought after than the 25s. The 25s are kind of a dime a dozen because 
even though they're awesome, they're getting over four ton to tow, extremely hard to launch and retrieve. You basically got to maul them and you got all the costs and things associated with that. So a lot of people spend a lot of money on 25s in Australia and lose a lot of money on 25s especially. The 23s are definitely more sought after and I think, you know, they're almost a bit more collectible as well. I, I truly think these 23s are almost going to become a collectible boat in the future because they are such a, a cool boat and you basically can't buy a new boat that has this type of format, you know, like an, an awesome big hard top in a seven meter boat, a boat that you can genuinely overnight spend the weekend in. Like, look how cool all this room is in here under this cover. Um, you can sleep, once I fix this seat here, you can sleep three, four people, no worries, plenty of room. Um, you know, they are a really, really cool boat and that's why I've wanted one for so long, but you know, what's the ceiling? I don't know. I think an absolute immaculate one of these is worth maybe 80 grand. Okay. Um, the 25s up to maybe a hundred. Um, but I see people trying to sell 25s for 150. Um, I don't think they're going to get it, but I see them trying and, uh, yeah, so it's very easy to pour a hundred grand into a boat like this, let me tell you. Especially if you buy one or start one where you've got to do floors, transoms, uh, etc. So this boat, when all is said and done, it will end up genuinely owing me around uh, the 70k mark. But hey, I'll have a seven meter boat with a brand new engine, brand new electronics, um, workable trailer, Everything will look schmick. So look, I can't really complain, right? Because um, to buy something new like this is now like, you know, close to the 200k mark. Let's face it, you know, you can go and buy almost this exact same boat new. It will set you back close to 200k. But anyway, look, I hope you guys found that interesting. I will keep uh, track of the budget. I will do a future episode as the boat continues to, you know, come up and improve, etc. I'll tell you guys exactly how much money I'm putting into it. I'm literally counting every dollar. I am not just dumping money into this boat stupidly. I have no intention on selling it for probably a long time, but when I do sell it, I don't want to get shafted. I want to try and um, break even. You know, I'm not saying I'm trying to make money. I just want to try and minimize the losses. So yeah, don't get sucked in. Don't get over emotional just because you think you're old Bertram or Caribbean is the bee's knees and you love it and it's worth everything to you. Not everyone sees it that way. And furthermore, people are not willing to fork over more than, you know, sort of certain amounts for these boats. So just be aware, be smart. And I'll see you guys shortly out on the water, hopefully.